Hello trail travelers, it is Carrie. And one thing we have always wanted to do is be able to extend our camping season. And the reasons why you can't are two, hot and cold. It's either gonna get too cold during the winter and it can get too hot during the summer. Well, I haven't figured out a way to solve the being too hot during the summer part yet other than maybe a zero breeze or a goal zero. So, I mean, there's some products out there that claim that they can cool off a tent, haven't tried them. But when it comes to heating, well, that's a whole different animal. Now, we've camped out in the, I would say, mid thirties, and we've been comfortable. We have extra blankets, we, we can handle it. If we wanted to get below that, we have a 12 volt electric blanket. And the, while that, can help you put it underneath you you get some nice warmth the problem is it really really sucks on the battery so that can be kind of a problem if you don't have a lot of spare battery to use so one solution that is very very popular these days is a diesel heater and this takes regular diesel that you get at the gas station 12 volt power and it can run a long long time a gallon of fuel can last you easily a two or three day weekend putting out some really nice heat so we're going to try that and see how it goes well i had talked about this before and vivor was kind enough to reach out and say hey do you want to try one of our units it was really the one i was looking at so i said sure we'll take a look at it this is going to run 125 dollars somewhere in there depending on the package and you need to know what you're in for when getting a diesel heater. It's not get this thing in on Friday and go hit a trail and go camping. There's some things you need to know about getting it set up. So we're gonna cover those things today. Now, in another video, we're gonna cover ways of making it more reliable. And that's issues that can arise with the fuel system primarily. And in very cold conditions, diesel will gel up. So we're gonna talk about how to solve that, how to deal with it, how to keep the thing running as good as possible so that you don't run into problems. Another video is gonna focus on getting it as quiet as possible. Because when we're out camping somewhere, the last thing we wanna hear is any type of motor noise going on we want it to be as quiet as possible so we can enjoy nature. So we'll talk about that in another video. For here, I wanna go over what you need to do to get this out of the box and up and running. So there's a couple different components to it. First is power. Well, on the back of here, we have power leads. We just have positive and negative ground, uh, positive, you know, your power and negative ground. This has to be connected to power somewhere. Well, since we're planning on running it off Blue Eddy batteries, and this is the AC70, the new battery from Blue Eddy, we'll talk about that some other point too, that has a standard 12 volt cigarette lighter plug. So what I bought was a 12 foot, 12, I, yeah, it actually is. It's a 12 foot, 12 volt extension. So what I'm gonna end up doing I'm gonna cut it off here, take the cords from here, solder them to here, and now we can plug this directly into either the Jeep, the Blue Eddy battery, or the Tribe trailer. All of those have the standard 12 volt plug. So you're gonna need some kind of adapter or some way of wiring it to 12 volt power. So that's number one. Number two, you're gonna need diesel fuel. So, I don't recommend filling this thing up and driving around with it. It has a vent on top. You could leak some out. It's also going to attract dirt, which is gonna keep the valve from staying clean. So I put a minimal amount of fuel in here and the rest is gonna be in some type of fuel canister somewhere on the trailer or outside of the Jeep. So you'll need a fuel container for that. Now let's talk about what it comes with. So. We'll start taking a few things out of here. Comes with a muffler for the exhaust. That'll help keep the noise down, although we're gonna talk about this in our video about quieting it down. 
in this bag, we kind of have a, I wouldn't go so far as to call this an air filter, but it goes on the air intake and it's only real purpose is going to keep bugs and major pieces of the debris out of the intake. So we're going to have to deal with this. It comes with a number of clamps and hoses. And while there is nothing wrong with these per se, I am going to be replacing all of these with ones that have wing nuts or thumb screws just to make everything about assembling and disassembling a lot easier. Now in the big tube here, we've got a couple different components. Ugh. So we have our air, air intake hose that's gonna, this will go onto here and then this will attach on the bottom for the air intake for the diesel motor. We have our exhaust pipe. So we're gonna have the muffler on one end and the other end going into the diesel heater. And then we have our hose. Well, this is the number one thing that you might be surprised about is this isn't gonna get you very far. Now, if you're putting this right next to a ground tent and you can just go ahead and pop this on here and have it go right into your tent, you're good. If you're putting this in your garage or a workshop, you're good. As long as you vent your exhaust outside, you're good to go. In our case, we have a rooftop tent, so it needs to go from wherever this is up to the top of our rooftop tent so we can get the air into there. So this is not going to cut it and we'll be adding a longer length of hose. So keep in mind, <laughs> you might need to buy a few components to get things up and running. Mainly, you might need a hose. Now, this is a standard three inch dryer hose. So you can go to Home Depot, you can go to Lowe's, you can probably go to Walmart, anywhere, and buy just a piece of three foot dryer vent hose. Now, what we're gonna do, we spent a little extra money. And <laughs> by a little extra money, I mean a total of about $16 to get a nice premium, like insulated hose so we lose less heat outdoors from just the, uh, the fact of it going through a pipe and more of that hot air is gonna get into the tent. So hopefully that'll keep it as efficient as possible. So what are we gonna do first? First, we're gonna wire up the um, electrical connector on here. We're going to get it plugged in, make sure everything's working. Now this one has a remote control on, off, plus and minus, real simple. And it's also supposed to, I believe, have Bluetooth capability. So we're going to check that. And if so, that makes it really easy to control when you're up in the tent to set exactly how you want it to be, knowing what it's doing and what it's all about. Couple pieces of precaution here. This thing can foul up. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna show you the insides because it's just that easy. And give you kind of an idea of what to expect from this thing. Okay, so what we have here is the heater unit and a fuel tank and a fuel pump. Pretty much it. There's some electronic controls in this piece, and there really isn't much to it. Now, this is loose in here. I don't know if I'm gonna end up securing that somehow. Uh, the fuel pump right here, this is one of the bigger complaints about noise. What you have is a piston pump. So you have a metal piston going into a metal rod or metal casing, and every time it moves, it's gonna go slam, 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 and you're gonna hear that tick, tick, tick sound. So we're gonna try some ways of minimizing the sound from here. Turn it around, you have the fuel line, and it's not bad fuel line, there's nothing wrong with this fuel line, but I'm gonna replace it with probably a more solid fuel line so it doesn't get pinched or constricted, um, and over time it doesn't get soft and uh, compressed when the pump is working. So we're probably gonna deal with that, but this really is all you have to it. 
This main section down here, the heater, this is where things can go wrong. If you do not run this thing properly, shut it down properly, and do your basic maintenance on here, that whole thing can get clogged with soot and you're gonna have a very bad evening somewhere that you don't want to. So as we get going, we're gonna talk about things to uh, do to make sure that that doesn't happen. One of the biggest things is simply shutting it down properly. When you go and you turn it off, let it sit for like five minutes, set a timer. Don't touch this thing for five, seven minutes. Let it go through its proper shutdown process. That will help keep things clean. If it's running and you just pull the power on it to shut it off, you have all this unburnt fuel inside the chamber and that is gonna gunk things up like nobody's business and you are in for a major cleaning job. So start it up properly, shut it down properly. You're gonna minimize the vast majority of your problems. All right, so I'm gonna put this thing back together. We're gonna to solder the connector onto here. We're gonna see if we can fire this thing up. Now we've got things put together. We've got the exhaust on here. We've got the air intake on the other side. We have our power. All that is up and running. And we've got what looks like time on the front. I don't see any way of setting the time yet. I'll have to dig into that. I don't see it in the manual. It's not in the app. One thing at a time, but things are up and running now. And you'll see I have it up on these leveling blocks. And that's because the feet, the base here, doesn't allow for the exhaust to uh, clear and come out. Um, maybe you could bend it enough, but I'm afraid of bending this stuff too much and uh, getting a little hole in it. So probably what I'm gonna do is just take some little pieces of wood or something and attach them to the bottom and give it that extra lift to clear that. So at this point, all we have left to do is put some diesel fuel in here and fire it up. Now, I don't have all the long hoses yet. That's all coming for the rooftop tent. But before we ever use it, we want to run it through one full long cycle. And that's going to be about eight hours. So we're going to set it up, get it running, and that's going to just kind of clean everything out. So what I'm going to do tonight is we're going to set it up, get it all prepped and ready to fire up. And then tomorrow morning, I'll fire it up and let it run for the eight hours. But we should be able to get it up and running tonight and at least get some heat out. All right, it's nice and early this morning and we're going to do our run-in test with the Vivor heater here. Just filled it up with diesel. So it should have plenty of fuel to run for six, eight hours without any problem whatsoever. But we are gonna come back and we'll check it and see just how much fuel is left when we're done. We'll check on it a few times. So again, I'm using the Blue Eddy AC70, so I'm gonna turn that on. And once that gets power, you'll see the screen turn on over here. And we can use the screen on here, we can use the app, or we can use the uh, remote that I have here. Three different ways of turning this on, which is pretty cool. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and hold down on says start heating. Now, what it's gonna do is start pulling some power and it's gonna work its way up to about 125 watts. That's going to preheat the glow plug that's in here. This is the biggest source of power drain on the system is heating up that glow plug. And that's gonna take a few minutes. Now, once the glow plug is warmed up, then the diesel engine kicks in and things start working. We start getting some hot air and <clears throat> the power consumption drops way, way, way down. We're gonna go from uh, about 125 watts down to about 15 to 20 watts, depending on your blower setting. So shouldn't take long. And then what you're gonna hear 
is the tick tick sound of the fuel pump. Now that is one of the biggest sources of noise on the unit and that's the thing most people complain about. Now for a lot of people it's just not bad enough and it's not any, anything that you're ever going to want to deal with. We like being in the middle of nowhere and not hearing anything. So any noise that this thing makes, we want to try and minimize as much as possible. That's not what this video is for. This video is to show you the system. Now the ticking just started. We're going to show you kind of the pros and cons like this. And what some, we may discuss what some people have done, but in another video, we're going to talk about trying to make this thing as quiet as possible. And there's a few different things that we're going to look at. So right now, the fuel pump has started. And often you'll see a puff of white smoke come out of the exhaust down there. Now, normally you, it's, you shouldn't get much. And if you're getting a lot of white smoke, that means you're getting a lot of carbon buildup in the system. Now, the main reason for that is because you just pulled the power on it before it was done with its cool down process. So whenever you are done using the heater, you want to shut it down properly. And that's, again, in the app, on the screen, or with the remote, holding down the off till it says that it's off, and then waiting. And I mean waiting, not seconds, like five, seven minutes. So what I do is I turn it off and I just set a timer on my phone for 10 minutes, come back, and then I start pulling the power off. If you pull the power before it's properly shut down, then you've got unburnt fuel in the system. It's gonna clog it up. You're gonna get all kinds of nasty residue in there. And that is not a situation that you wanna have when you're out camping, because that is a disassembly of the whole diesel system and cleaning it out not something you ever want to do. So the better you can take care of the system, the better it's going to run for you. Okay, now, the I don't know if you heard the, the change there, but the fuel pump was getting faster and faster, and then all of a sudden it dropped down and to a, a lower speed, and now we're starting to get some heat out of here. Now the heat generated right at this point here inside, if you took a thermometer and put it in there, that's gonna get upwards of 300 degrees. So this thing does get pretty warm and you have your line off here, this is gonna get pretty warm. Your exhaust is gonna get very, very hot. So you wanna make sure that's not touching anything flammable because it could definitely light grass or uh, things like that on fire, wood. So you wanna be very careful that that exhaust is clear of anything that can melt or catch on fire. So one of the precautions we're going to do is we're going to wrap that with some thermal tape, uh, make that a little bit more secure. The hose we're replacing with an insulated hose so we don't lose uh, too much of the heat before it goes up into the tent, but all that is going to be coming later. Right now, we just want to get it up and running, do a, a long burn-in test, which is going to blow out any like manufacturing oils and things like that that you really don't want to smell and that should get it ready for us to use in the tent. So at this point, we're just gonna let her run. We'll come back every once in a while and check it. But as long as this thing runs, you know, pretty much all day, we're gonna be good to go. So next up, we'll get the other accessories that we've purchased and we'll get them up inside the tent. Okay. It is a cold one this morning. It is about 13 degrees here at Trail Traveler headquarters. So it's a perfect opportunity to test the Vivor heater and see how well it's gonna do heating up the Alpine 61. So for power, we have it connected to one of these new Blue Eddy AC71s. So it's 768 watt hours. It should run this thing for days on end over there. Uh, we've got it powered up. We're gonna turn it on. Uh, okay, so we're gonna see how it goes. We'll check it every few minutes and we can actually log 
the temperature over time uh, with a sensor that we have in there. So we'll see how long it takes to get to dim different temperatures and at what setting. So initially, we're gonna start off by blasting the thing. Now, like I said, it's 13 degrees. We wanna get it warm enough to, to be inside of it. So once it fires up, we're gonna set it on probably like level eight to try and get the temperature warmed up. And then we're gonna see if we can just run it at like a level two to keep the tent warm. So let's see what we've got inside. So we have our vent coming up there at the top. We've got the tent all closed up. We have our thermometer there showing 12.9 degrees. Like I said, it is a cold one here and we have a, a temp.fee uh, sensor so we can actually get a graph of how the, the temperature is gonna change over time. So 12.9, the heater's firing up right now. So it'll kick in in a few minutes. We'll get some warm air going into the tent and we'll just see how warm we can get it and how comfortable we can maintain it in these super, super cold temperatures. Okay, it's been 15 minutes that the heater has been running on the heat mode. So I didn't count the couple minutes of time that it was in the ignition stage and getting ready to kick in. But as soon as it switched over to heating, then I started the timer. Now it does take a few minutes for it to come up to full temperature. So, you know, there's a little delay there, but I, I did count that in the original 15 minutes. And again, it's 14 degrees out here. It's wavering between 13 and 14 degrees outside right now. Let's pop our head in the tent and see where it's at. Now my expectation is not that it's gonna be 40, 50, 60 degrees in there. I'm guessing it's probably gonna be in you know, the 20s or something because it's only been 15 minutes to warm up that volume of air, which also means probably heating up the, the mattress somewhat so that it's not you know, helping to cool it back off again. I expect that to get it to a more comfortable level is gonna take about 30 minutes running on a high setting but it's been 15 minutes. Let's go check out and see what the temperature is inside. Okay, I am a, a pleasantly surprised. It's almost 30 degrees in here. So 28.8, 29 degrees. We're cooking along pretty good. Let's get it closed up and give it another 15 minutes. Okay, we're at the 30 minute mark and I'm not, again, I'm, I'm not disappointed. We're at 38 degrees, 37.9, going on 38 degrees in there. Now, I knew this was going to be a tough test for the Vivor diesel heater. I mean, this is already a 20 degree difference in the tent than the ambient temperature. That's quite a bit to ask for a diesel heater getting more than a 20 degree difference when it's this cold outside. So we're going to keep monitoring it see where we end up and uh yeah let's give it another 15 minutes that'll make 45 and we'll see how toasty it is inside the tent at that point but now it's 38.5 so it's already gone up a bit since i've been talking here so let's keep it running see where we get to so here's the deal we're at 45 minutes well we will be in 15 seconds We'll be at 45 minutes and we're coming up on 49 degrees inside the tent. So it's doing pretty good at, at you know, 50 degrees. That's, that's pretty warm enough to get in and start getting ready for bed. You can actually be pretty comfortable at 50 degrees. So there's the 45 minute mark, 48.7 degrees inside. So what I'm gonna do at 15 minutes more, we're gonna turn it down to the two setting and see where we hold temperature at. So will it continue to go up? Will it drop? What are we gonna do if we drop it down to a two setting? So another 15 minutes, we'll see where we're at. I think we have some good data now. It, and uh, it's definitely time to turn down the heat. It has been running for one hour. It is 62.6, so almost 63 degrees. We keep our house at 65 degrees. So 63, 64 degrees inside of a tent when it's right now, it is 23 degrees outside. That's pretty darn good. You know, 
it, it did take maybe a little bit longer than I expected. I expected maybe 30 to 45 minutes for it to really be at a nice comfy temperature. But right now at the hour mark, we're almost at 63 degrees and it's doing great. So what's up next? I'm going to go into the heater app here and we can see it's on the eight setting and I'm gonna turn it down to level two. So now we'll hear the heater start to turn down and I'm not gonna touch it right now for an hour. I wanna see how it holds temperature. Now, something to note, and I'll, you know, I'll make sure I, I put this on the screen so you can see it more clear, but as the temperature in the tent has gone up, the humidity in the, temp in the tent has gone down. So that is a big plus, because often, just even from your breath, you'll get condensation inside the tent. But because this is blowing in warm, dry air, it is not cold, it's not, I mean, it's not wet air, it's cold, it's dry air, it is drying out the tent. So that's a nice plus to get it even uh, a better feeling in there. So when it's 60 and it's high humidity, it's going to feel colder than 60 with low humidity. So by having dry air pumped in, it's lowering the humidity, making it even more comfortable inside. So we're dropping the heater down to level two, which is what I expect we would probably run it at while we're sleeping. And we're going to see how well it holds temperature for the next hour. Before we wrap things up, I want to talk about hose selection because this is actually very important. If you're going from the heater into your workshop, garage, shed, that type of situation, or even right from the ground directly into a ground tent, the, even the hose that comes with it is probably fine. You just need a small section, three inch pipe, it's gonna work just fine. However, when you're going up into a rooftop tent, the three inch hose is gonna to be too restrictive and it will cause the heater to overheat. So for that, we went with a four inch hose and made just a little adapter to go from the three inch into the four inch. And I'm looking for some other solutions to make that even easier. I have one, I haven't tested it out yet. I gotta see if the uh, diameter fits into the four inch hose properly but I'll find something that just makes it a lot easier to set up. But moving to the rooftop tent, you gotta have a four inch hose so that it can move that air up in there nice and smooth without getting the heater restricted and causing the overheating problem. It's exactly what happened to us when we did our first tests. We only had a three inch, the heater overheated on anything above the two setting. Well at two, Staying warm all night is fine. It's just getting the tent up to temperature would probably take about an hour and a half or two hours. So we wanna be able to run it at a high uh, setting, get all that air in there, get it warmed up, and then drop it down. So in order to run at that seven, eight setting, we gotta have a four inch pipe. So just wanted to throw that out there before we wrap things up. It has been about 50 minutes now, and I figure that's, this has been a good, nice test here. So right before I switched it down to level two, it had reached a maximum of 64.9 degrees. And as I said, we keep our house at 65 degrees, so it's basically identical, or it was identical in there as to what we're comfortable having in our house. So very comfortable uh, temperature. When I dropped it down to level two, then what we got was down to about 55 degrees and it has started going back up again. Now let's take a look at the uh, temperature out here. So you can see it is 23 degrees. So you can see it's still nice and cold out here. So at 23 degrees, we're able to get it up to 65 degrees pretty easily. And it's running at, uh, let's see, it's 58 degrees in there right now, which is 
pretty darn comfortable with a couple blankets and uh, everything going on. So it is really, really nice inside the tent. Very comfortable for sleeping. So what's our conclusion here? That uh, A, <laughs> you know, when it's 14 degrees outside, it takes a bit to, to warm up a tent for sure. You know, it's gonna take 45 minutes to an hour to really get the tent nice and warm. It's the material, everything in there has to warm up. So it's, it's gonna take 45 minutes to an hour. After that, you can run it on a level two, a level three, and keep it nice and comfortable all night long in this like 20 degree temperature. And we don't plan on going out when it's 14 degrees or, or zero degrees, but the fact that we know that we can and what to expect from it is a big deal. So the Vivor heater, I think is an absolute winner right now. The design of it is really nice. We like that it's an all-in-one package. The internal fuel tank on it is pretty cool. The only downside is the ticking of the fuel pump. Now, you may not hear it too loud right here, and that's because I've done some work to make it as quiet as possible, and the very next video is gonna be how we got this thing to be as quiet as we possibly could. So stay tuned for that video coming up next week and see how we made this thing super quiet. But for us, this right here is gonna be a go-to. Um, this is an, the, the hose we're, we're using here. I'm gonna to link to this, but this is a insulated hose. So this hose, as it feels right here, it's not very warm on the outside. So it's putting more of that warm air inside. If you use a cheap uh, dryer duct on here that's not insulated at all, you're gonna lose a lot of heat to the elements. So keep that in mind. So for us, the Vivor unit, definitely a good buy. If you want to extend your winter camping season later into the season, start it earlier in the season, it's gonna be great. If you're gonna be in zero degree temperatures or below, set your expectations well. We don't know what it's gonna do in temperatures like that. But in 15, 20 degrees, it absolutely rocks. So thanks for watching everybody. This is Carrie from Katarina and myself. Stay safe out there. We'll see you on the trails.